Welcome to my channel, Comic Book Toys. And today we're going to talk about the subject of your comic book issues. We're going to talk about independent publishers surviving in today's current market in the comic book industry. Uh, as of today, we know that comic books number sales are very low um, in today's market in the industry. Um, people have lost so much interest in the superhero genre of comic books and it's being outsold by manga books these days so i wanted to talk about uh, maybe some possibilities of the reasons why and how we as independent creators and publishers within the industry that we know and love how can we survive this market and also progress to succeed in the industry as a independent comic book creator? As we know of, in the early 1980s, the comic books were usually sold on newsstands and, you know, different stores and different um, markets that were more known out to the public. I know I used to go to 7-Eleven and I see my comic book sold, see comic books sold there. And I got my first comic book at a local, not local, at a store locally around my dad's job. And um, I bought the first X-Men, I think it was X-Men 117, if I remember correctly. Um, and that was my first book, and also read Sonya, you know. <laughs> and those two were my first two books that caught my eye, and I was interested in. Uh, I guess I was about, I was very young, um, when I bought my own comic book, or wanted to, my dad to purchase it, when I was about nine or 10, or maybe 11. I just remember seeing comic books everywhere. Like, you would go into Walmart, you would go into, uh, uh, pick and save, you see books sold in packets and everything. But somewhere in the mid 1980s, all of a sudden that started to change. You started seeing comic book specialty stores that sold comic books only, and you saw less of the comic book being sold in the industry and this was uh one of the reasons how diamond became successful because i think it was one of the first establishments that specialized in comics that um specialized in distributing comic books to specialty stores which is, which are comic book stores that we know and love in the neighborhood and um, things like that so that happened around the 1980s from what i understand um, and then, you know, the comic book market became a billion dollar industry and, and during the eight, from the eighties to the early mid nineties through the nineties, it was like a billion dollar business in the comic book industry itself. Um, it was a big market and I was in that throw of the suite of working on at, with, at the big majors in the comic book industry such as Marvel, DC, Valiant, you name it, I probably worked, uh, had my work uh, as an employee for them, uh, as an artist. Um, but I remember the com comic books were so available and so it was a strong, had a strong financial market that you know, it was everywhere and it was uh, in abundance. With the big majors having such success with their comic book titles and their, and their comic book publishing companies, that also dwindled down to the independent comic book publishers and they got a piece of the pie. And, and it was Marvel and DC, I think, helped that push for the independent markets to grow as well. Because when, especially within specialty stores, if you want to get a Marvel or a DC comic book, you would have to go to the specialized comic book store, which had other publishing companies. 
these ethnic characters were independent. And so you would have availability of different things to choose from, not only just from Marvel and DC, but from different other publishers that you could discover that would never have been discovered if you just stayed in the public market and newsstands uh, as we know of in the past. So this is where we got um, Ninja Turtles, uh, mm -hmm. The She Was Out, um, so many other independent comic books were um, very successful during that time. And it was like everybody had a love fest and everybody was doing their thing and it was a big market right then. But then I think what happened um, was the market started to change. Um, I think the, mar the com uh, Marvel Comics and DC Comics made so much money, they started to become a uh, uh, marketing tool more so than telling stories. And I did another video about that um, last week, you can check it out. Um, and um, it, they made so much money, it started not to be as creative, but started to become a marketing tool to just basically make money and to build an audience uh, with everything. And so, uh, and also too, with the market uh, being crowded with other markets, such as the video game market, uh, you have cell phones, you have started to have uh, apps like Hulu and uh, other apps as you know about, like Netflix and stuff like that started to be available. And so that got, um, that kind of stole the attention from a usual comic book reader or a casual comic book reader to find interested in entertainment. Then you have film and all that stuff, you know, and things like that. Instead of reading a book and waiting for a month to see a storyline, you could have, you can binge watch a whole series in like one day like on Netflix or Hulu. So uh, I think that's part of the market too. So the comic book market has a lot more competition uh, than it did back in the past from the 80s and the early, I mean, from the early, to, from the mid 80s to the early or late 90s. And so I think that's when sales start to dwindle down as far as, uh, the comic book industry is still keeping relevant. Um, so, of course, that hampers the independent comic book publisher as well. So, I think with today, with the whole craziness that's going on with the virus we can't name on YouTube, uh, with the whole over out of new outlook that people are looking at in governments and uh, just the whole uh, controversies with uh, society that's happening today. Um, the comic book market is <laughs> the least important to people these days as far as like, if they're gonna buy anything, would it be a comic book? I doubt it. Um, I know it would probably be an app channel or something like that, a video game that you have to compete with, which is almost like a live comic book story within itself uh, that you can actually basically control. We, as independent publishers, have to think different and outside of the box. And also, I think it's time for evolution of Comic book market to change itself. How can we market it? How can we actually execute? What will keep the attention span and the interest of people in today in 2020? And how to keep it going? Because I think the comic book market hasn't elevated to a certain point. Yes, we have digital comics, but it's basically comic books online, the way you just flip a page and turn around. And I think people have less of an attention span on 
a digital comic unless you do, you know, unless it's something cool or special, then they want a comic book itself. So, um, and a comic book is pretty special because you have it in your hands. But in these days, you know, with digital technology, you have books and novels being read on uh, online and stuff like that. And, you know, through Amazon and buy books through Amazon, basically digitally and read it that way. So with a comic book that's only about so, so many pages, the person will probably read in 30 minutes, it's sort of like, why spend time with it when you can actually watch the movie of it? Um, and then you get your satisfaction from there. But we have to understand how important comic books are. We all know what I'm talking about. Um, comic books push a narrative, comic books push his ideas, comic books, there wouldn't be an MCU universe without comic books. There wouldn't be a DCU universe without comic books. Uh, there, uh, you know, uh, Disney would make millions of dollars if Marvel Comics didn't exist. Um, and as for us independents, we can push the narrative, we can become a major, we can uh, change minds and change hearts with our comic books as well. And art is a very strong form of almost like we have art have technology, you would have most of the half of the things that you have in the world today. Um, everything is started by art, everything is started by ideas and jotting them down and sketching them down on a piece of paper. Uh, basically, if there's any product or anything that you have that's basically man made, it's starting with a piece of art imagination. So, I think it's very important that we keep that hold and still within our art and push the medium, I'm trying to think of different ways to push the medium forward. Um, I have certain ideas, I'm not going to spew it out on here on the YouTube channel for somebody else to do, but <laughs> um, I have my ideas on how to do that and to push the market forward and to make, because comic books basically hasn't really changed I mean, the paper quality has changed, but there needs to be something different with that. There needs to be something that has to push the regular old combo to compete with all this other stuff that we have to compete with. And we have to find out reasons why manga comic books sell more than superhero comic books that's are sold from America. And um, so we have to figure that out. And we also have to elevate and make our comic books different, even from the majors. So um, if you have ideals, just do that. I know that Indiegogo, like they do stuff through Indiegogo and the other type of crowdfunding things, that they're producing their comic books in that fashion. And that's cool and fine. I think that's pretty awesome that people um, have thought a way out to publish their own books. Um, but there are also other ways. I don't think crowdfunding is the only way to do that. And there could be other ways to do that that is more, there could be more uh, universal. Um, and without crowdfunding that you can, I, I usually don't. Would I do a crowdfunding? I have no idea if I would or not. Uh, because I would want to create a book on my own without anyone giving money to my book to have certain expectations. I want to create a comic book that's creatively coming from me without any marketing or ideas of what people like and what people don't like just create for me and then hopefully they would appreciate my work with what it is. So this is what I want to just rant about and talk about and uh, just kind of 
start conversation with this topic with independent publishers and creators and try to find a way to bring something into the comic book game. I have some ideas, but you'll find it out when I come out with my comic book publishing company. So, well, we start again, like, we prize my comic company, which is Digital Boys, which we all know, and it's already been established. And, uh, but I'm reintroducing the whole comic book publishing company, Digital Noise, by next year. But anyhow, I just want to give you. So that's all I have to say today. So if you like what you're hearing, like, subscribe, share. Happy Gay Pride to everyone this weekend. If you celebrate that, and if you're part of the LGBT community, celebration. Be careful out there, be healthy, stay safe, and take care.